the number one mistake that I see happen to adult beginners is beginners who are getting fitted to the wrong size instrument. And I cannot stress this enough. A lot of people play on an instrument that is just too large for them. A small instrument is actually easier to play. In fact, I think that's probably one of the best kept secrets among cellists. Think about this in, in terms of being on an equal, equal playing field. So large people who have really large hands, they have a substantial advantage over smaller people with smaller hands. You can always size up an instrument later on, but the frustration that you're gonna encounter as a beginner on a cello that's too big might be something that you can't overcome. And if you think this scenario is what you're dealing with right now, I would suggest that you go and try to find a smaller instrument. Go rent a smaller instrument. If you're playing on a full size, go see if you can find a seven, eight size cello. And if you're a really small person, you might go ahead and try to see if you can fit in a three quarter size instrument. Because if you're playing and you're having a hard time with that left hand stretch, that may be that may be the problem. If you get a high quality rental instrument, you're gonna be pretty happy with the outcome. I virtually never have anybody come back to a lesson with me and say, you know, I really wish I had that big cello still in my hands. And you know, it's quite the opposite. They come back and they say, it's so much easier to play now. I wish I had done this sooner. Number two is adults that are playing with the improper bow hold. This is kind of a tricky one because there's this basic bow hold that we all learn where the fingers all go, but there are definitely variances of the bow hold. In reality, you're not really holding the bow anyway. You're just putting the weight on the bow and, and you're guiding the direction that it's going. So try to always think about the bow as an extension of your of your arm and your hand because it really is it's just like this long extension of of your arm and your hand because you should always feel that stickiness of the hair on the string you should feel that all the way through your arm and and your hands and the bow hold it actually starts all the way back in your shoulder it really does it starts back here and it goes down into your arm and all the way into your hands and if your shoulder is too high or your elbow is too high, you are in essence just cutting off all of the natural weight, which needs to go into that bow hair. And along those same lines, flexibility with the bow hand is so crucial. That's where so much of the nuance in playing comes from. And think about it, if you watch a, if you watch a little kid wave, I mean, they're, they're gonna wave like this. They're, they're not gonna wave like this because that's just got a ton of tension in it. And the same is true of our bow hold. You have to allow that wrist to be really flexible and you can't ever get a smooth bow change without a flexible wrist. So a, a correct bow hold takes constant practice. I think I had to relearn the bow hold maybe two or three times uh, in my formative years, but eventually I understood how to do it and you will too and then that aha moment finally does arrive. And this brings me to my next item, which is relaxation when playing. Again, this is a tricky one as well, because as a new cellist, you have tension. It's not natural yet, it's awkward. But just like you can learn to have the bow become an extension of your arm, you can learn to have the cello become an extension of your body. If the cello has been set up correctly, you'll be in a good position to becoming more relaxed as a cello player. There's a couple of techniques that um, I believe will help us become more aware of a relaxed body when we play the cello. And the first one is, is all about breathing. If you do yoga or any exercise, you understand how that helps your body. So when you breathe, when you play cello, you always wanna breathe in deeply. And I think it's good to let your shoulders and your arms rise. And then when you exhale, you wanna exhale really deeply and let your shoulders and your arms fall as low as you can get them, just like this. I do that frequently. Another thing you can do is massage your forearms and just squeeze all those muscles all up and down your forearms just for a minute and you'll instantly see and feel how much more relaxed that your arms are when you play. So just try that a little bit, it always helps. 
Another thing I do is have my beginning cello players do the cello hug. And the cello hug is a great indicator of whether the cello is placed correctly on your body. To do this, you're simply gonna cross your arms and you're gonna put your hands on the upper part of the C bout of the cello. So I'm just crossing them, just more or less there. And you're gonna gently rock back and forth and you're gonna sway. You do this by lifting one ankle and then the other ankle. And do this, really feel the cello as part of your body. Continue to breathe and just to be relaxed. The fourth issue is adults that try to learn without a metronome. And I get it. You, you think you have this great internal clock and all that. And I can tell you that teachers don't tell you to play with a metronome because we like to tell you to play with a metronome. We tell you this because it really does work. I probably would have progressed a whole lot faster in my youth had I understood this and used the metronome on a much more regular basis. The metronome is, it's the ultimate truth teller. You're placing music into space, in time, and it's not random. We are all built to feel rhythm, whether that is a pace when we're walking or when we're running or in when we're cleaning and, and all that stuff. And music is no exception. One of the fundamental elements of music is rhythm. And I always hear beginners say, well, I can't hear the metronome. I can't play with it. Well, that's actually true for almost every single musician ever. Musicians learned how to play with the metronome by doing it. The more that that thing is clicking, the more often you will have the opportunity to jump into that beat and stay with it. And I, I think the metronome is slightly hypnotic in the sense that once you get into that groove of playing with it and staying with it all the time, you're gonna stay in that groove um, a whole lot longer than if you try practicing without the metronome. So practice with the metronome. It will make or break your progress. Number five is learning to play the cello without accountability. And adults are smart and savvy and have learned a lot in their lifetime and because of that adults really believe that they can go at this alone and whether that means watching random youtube videos where there is you know a ton of great information a ton of not so great information or trying to learn without a teacher or trying to learn without a buddy having another partner in the process is a real barometer of success when you feel accountable to someone else you're more likely to work at it and continue with it. And that might mean that you need to take a private lesson every week or perhaps every other week, or it might mean bringing a friend along for the ride. So the two of you can meet, you can talk about things that you're learning, things that you're practicing, um, encourage each other, you know, build each other up, and you just talk, talk through all this stuff. But accountability might also mean signing up for a community orchestra so that you have a chance to meet with others who are learning along with you and you can share in this communal music making. So that's just another option. But however you look at it, be accountable to someone. You're, you're gonna be much more likely to continue playing the cello that way if you're accountable to someone. And the final big mistake, and this is a biggie, that um, adult cellists make is trying to progress too quickly. Adults tend to be a little bit impatient. Learning the cello is sometimes a bucket list for people. And adults have this tendency to want to look at the end product and not think enough about the journey. Adults want to make the best sound now. They want to do this right now. They want to play the hardest piece right now. But it's like everything else that we learn. Every little step that we take brings us that much closer to success. So start slow start really slow enjoy every open string enjoy every single new note that you learn enjoy every single metronome click that you're able to stay with and hear enjoy every beautiful new tone that you produce um, and enjoy every new piece of music that you conquer and once you can get into the mindset of enjoying the now then you're going to be able to look back in a year and find yourself in a bit of awe at what you were able to accomplish. And after a few years of this 
this kind of a mindset, you should be playing fairly well. So slow down and enjoy the journey. And if you want to know more about learning the cello online with expert instruction and some fun interactive music studies and a community of support, check out cellodiscovery.com. It's affordable and it's fun. And also don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to my channel below if you want more free cello instruction and cello performance videos. So thank you.